Good afternoon. Okay, we're still going through the 12 new compassionate allowances um, conditions that the SSA has approved to be compassionate allowances for people filing for Social Security Disability or SSI. Okay, so this came out August of 2023, just the other day. Um, we've gone through two. Um, I'm going to try to get through all 12, but all separately. So if you're looking for a particular condition, you don't have to listen to all of them. So the one right now is calciphylaxis. It's also known as cal. I was gonna, I'm going to butcher this. Watch calcific uremic arteriolopathy, and also uremic gangrene syndrome. Both of those are other names, alternative names for the same condition. Um, which brings up the point that when you file um, for this condition. Um, if you use one of these other terms, and there might be others, the SSA system, I believe, is, is designed to catch that um, and pull it out as a compassionate allowance potential. Um, so sometimes if you don't use the exact word of their heading, like calciphylaxis, any of these other ones might work, or there might even be others that they're going to have um, an ability to pull out. But if you do find out it is the real McCoy, you want to make sure that they are treating it as a potential compassionate allowance because that will expedite your case beyond, you know, it's not gonna be first in, first out for you. You're gonna be done first, okay? Um, in any event, they go on to say, and I'm looking at the um, the SSA's blurb about it that they put out on August 9th of 2023. Um, and uh, when they describe it, they discuss that it's a rare metabolic disease in which calcium builds up in the walls of the veins and the arteries, blocking the blood flow and resulting in damage to multiple organs um, and organ systems. Um, it can cause painful infected sores on the skin that cannot heal without external intervention. And then I think sometimes they can't heal at all even with external uh, intervention is my understanding. Um, the cause is not known, um, but it is often seen in people with ESRD and stage renal cancer, uh, renal disease, pardon me, um, particularly if they're on dialysis or undergone a kidney transplant. If it's with people with normal kidney function, it is associated with comorbidities that tend to include um, IBS or IBD, that's inflammatory bowel disease, autoimmune disorders, or cancer. Diagnostic, diagnostic testing, and excuse me, I think I'm losing my voice, I had a lot of meetings today. Um, it's usually confirmed through skin biopsy, function tests of the kidneys and liver, um, and tests for concentrations of the calcium and other minerals in the blood, because it's all about that calcium buildup, right? Um, apparently in some advanced cases, particularly with end-stage renal disease, uh, they can possibly diagnose it through visual inspection of the wounds. So maybe all, the, all that other diagnosis methods are not necessary. As we've discussed before, um, if you have a disorder that's a compassionate allowance like this one, um, and you put it in your application, that's not going to be enough. You have to actually have um, a medical provider who diagnosed you according to um, the, the acceptable standards of diagnosing within the medical profession, of which they allude to some here. And this is what probably the SSA um is looking for or would expect to see in your medical records along with the diagnosis that there is any of the following, pain, fatigue, muscle weakness, aches and cramps, vision problems, skin lesions and sores, and skin necrosis. Um, the, the prognosis with calciphylaxis is very, very poor. Um, and that is usually why it ends up being a compassionate allowance or at least part of the reason, right? It advances rapidly, generally. Um, and unfortunately can be intensely painful um, and result in organ failure. And so usually it's fatal. And again, that's not an uncommon prognosis when it's going to become a compassionate allowance potential, okay? Um, there is no cure. The treatment is generally gonna be supportive to focus on the pain relief and the wound care because they can't cure it, but they can maybe the, make the patient feel better physically, um, and therefore maybe mentally too. Um, 
Sometimes they'll do intravenous administration of um, sodium thiosulfate, which has shown some promise in dissolving calcium in the blood, according to the SSA, um, and improving the blood flow and promoting the wound healing. This is, however, considered very experimental. It's off-label use of the STS, which is that sodium thiosulfate, and more study is required. Um, not sure why they include that. Um, this would meet listing 6.03, 6.04, and 6.09. Then I hear a bunch of dogs, you hear that? Um, it can also equal listing number 8.04. If the skin lesions produced by the non-infectious conditions persist for at least three months despite continuing treatment as prescribed. So when they say equals, um, if you don't meet the listing as it's expressly directed, like that 6.03 or 4 and 09, but you can then equal either 6.09 or 8.04 8 and still be found um, disabled without having to go through that whole RFC extensive case workup that we do when it's for all the cases that are not um, listing level. Um, so that's another avenue. There's a few avenues. If you don't meet those criteria of those listings, and I'm going to try to link them below uh, in the remarks or comments, and then you can look at those if the shoe fits. Um, all right. Well, there you go. Um, they just remind us all that the final decision to allow or deny the claim rests with the adjudicator. I find it's a funny expression at the bottom of this page. It's on every one of these pages. Um, it, it just seems kind of funny to me. All right. Um, I'll leave it to it. I'm going to, I'm going to link this down below and you can read it in your own spare time. Um, and I'll try to put those listings that are associated with it down there also. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, but I'll try to get to that shortly after I put it up. All right. Take care now. Bye.